Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, everyone. I have an idea. Let's sing. Let's sing together. <laughs> You're in the right place at the right time. smile on my face <laughs> i got some deep heating down in the truck <laughs> some essential oil or something yeah you can smile and grit your teeth at the same time yeah that's right. <laughs> <laughs> good morning to everybody okay repeat after me i am amazing 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 good job uh, welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living. I am your host, Shane Hughes. Uh, we are so glad you're here. Welcome to uh, our center where transformation happens. Whether you're with us in person or love streaming, uh, know that you are loved and that you belong. Love streamers, would you please share with us where you're love streaming from? That'd be great. Um, our center is a spiritual community that teaches a philosophy for daily living based on spiritual principles and practices that are universal among all religions. We honor every pathway by which people seek to know and connect with the divine. And we work on our own individual consciousness so we can help make the world a better place. Please say with me our purpose statement. We are an open, welcoming community, celebrating our divinity, loving our humanity, and nurturing our journeys of spiritual discovery. Yes! That's yes. what we should do. Yes. That's what we should start doing right after. Yes! Yeah. What it is. Our theme for this month is the power of I am. And Reverend Cindy's talk today is the miracle of radical self-knowing. Myrna Hurst will be doing our reading and prayer. Thanks, Myrna. And Audrey Gum is currently holding high watch knowing our highest good. Today's special music, drum roll. Yeah. Uh, wait. <laughs> he missed it. He totally missed it. Is Sophie Zane and the real folk. Hi, guys. Woo. Next week's speaker will be Reverend Myrna and, and Lana Carnes. And next week's special music will be Mandy Danzig. Yeah, yeah we love Mandy for sure. Uh, for more information about our center, you're welcome to go to uh, www.spirituallyfree.org. I probably get, okay. Uh, okay, so if you never need a midweek refresher, please join our practitioner for a live stream on Facebook at noon for a, a midweek meditation. You can find us on Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. Um, 
Okay, Reverend Cindy, you got a minute? Do you mind? <laughs> I have a minute. I have a few minutes. Um, I just wanted to say that we started our advanced consciousness studies class this last week. And it's not too late. It's not too late if you want to join us. And what this class is all about is everything that we talk about from this stage, but putting it into practice in your life and understanding how it can actually transform your life. It's a deep class. It's three terms of nine weeks each. So it is no joke, but if you want to know yourself, and experience the power and miracles of self-knowing, this is a class for you. So come join us. You've only missed one week. We can get you caught up. Um, we'd love to have you. And it's done on Zoom, and it's also done in person in this room on Thursday nights at 6.30. Go see the hospitality table, or see myself, or see Linda here, and we can get you signed up. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Reverend Cindy. Okay. Oh, hey. <laughs> How's that? They good? Oh, hey. Did you know we rent our classroom um, and or sanctuary for private events, birthday parties, weddings, business meetings, pillow fights? What about that? Because that would be fun. I, I can kick some butt with a pillow. Um, if you're looking for a space to rent for your next event, please reach out to our very own dear Robert Wetzel and for rates and information. Um, okay, well, so we talked about spirituallyfree.org. I jumped the gun on that one. Um, and you can find us on Facebook, Salt Lake Center for Spiritual Living. Uh, do we have anyone visiting for the first time? Oh, hi. Welcome. Welcome. Awesome. Uh, so there's some uh, gift uh, packet or package, whatever it is, for you out by the hospitality table. Tell you a little bit about us. It's not a car or anything. So, um, so that's awesome. Well, well you're certainly welcome. Uh, just know that we know for you that, and we affirm for you that, and everyone here that you will be a bless. You experience a blessing by being here this morning. Um, our ministry is founded on prayer. Prayer helps us deal with whatever comes our way to recognize a spiritual purpose for whatever might be happening in our lives. If you're having trouble knowing that, please let one of our amazing practitioners wearing the purple stoles help you know it for yourself until you can know it for yourself. Uh, they'll be available right after services, right in the, in the room right across the, the hall there for, to pray with you. And um, yeah, it, it works. Now I invite you to go within and allow the centering music to connect you with the God within. Moves through me. 
once in a while, we are given moments of real grace. Sometimes during my early morning meditation, a place within me opens and a part of myself lets go that I didn't even know was hanging on. In these moments, I feel all the hard, hard places in my heart and body yield to a greater softness carried on my breath. And I am filled with compassion for the part of me that is always trying, always organizing, problem solving, anticipating, and my mind stops and simply follows my breath. A great faith washes through me. And knowing that everything needs to get done will get done. My shoulders drop an inch. This small but familiar ache in my chest eases and the moment stretches. There is enough time, enough energy, enough of all that is needed a great tenderness for myself and the world opens inside me and I know I belong to this time, to these people, to this earth, and to something that is both within and larger than all of it, something that sustains and holds us all. I do not want to be anywhere else. I am filled with commitment to and compassion for myself and the world. This is the reality we live, aspiring to be at our best, longing for and sometimes finding meaning and connection within ourselves and with that which is larger than ourselves. As from Oriah Mountain Dreaming in her book, The Invitation. In this place now, let's spend a couple of minutes just in the silence. One of those great moments of real grace. And in this moment of real grace, as we feel the energy in this room and the connection that we always have with each other, we connect to and are part of that divine, the I am. We are filled with compassion and commitment to ourselves, to each other, and to all of the world. And in this challenging time, we know that our commitment is to peace. As we find challenges in the world outside of ourselves, we know the peace that we are. We know the energy that we are and we send that energy out to connect with all that is and to bring a greater peace to all of the world. I am so grateful to know that we have this power to change our own lives, yes, if they need changing connect with our family here in this room and outside this room. Connect electronically with all of those love streaming and make them as much a part of this room as those who are sitting here. We send our energy out into the universe to include you and everyone else. And we know in this day there will be joy and laughter and purpose and love. And knowing this, we breathe into this moment and just simply let it be. 
as together we say and so it is. Thank you, Myrna. We're going to sing a song together. This song speaks to um, that move from, movement from self-deprecation, self-criticism, and witnessing that in yourself and, and moving to that radical self-forgiveness and, and self-knowing. To realize the gifts you have to give to yourself, to those loved ones around you, to the world, live inside you and they want to be expressed. So you give the gift you are. Let's sing together. bad dog in my head I give him bones to pick but he picks on me instead I tossed him dreams to fetch so I could get it the mud just hides them in a hole or rips them all to shreds but there's an angel singing at the bottom of my soul she tames that mangy mud when I let her take control opens the blind mind lets the light in and until I hear the call God is smiling and I give the gift I am my heart, my soul my hands I see the light from a higher sight by that bully in my brain he likes to put me down call me ugly names he knows the things I want to do to feel to claim he says who do you think you are and pulls him down the drain but there's an angel singing at the bottom of my soul she calls that bully out when I let her take control Blinds in my mind to let some light in. Standing tall, I heed the call. My good is coming, and I give the gift I am. My heart, my soul, my hands. I see the light from a higher sight. Yes, I forgive my foolish use of this good mind. I'll leave the bully and the bad dog far behind. Unleash the love, the joy, the light, let it shine. Know this heaven on earth and feel my stars align. Cause there's an angel singing at the bottom of my soul. It is my own voice ringing and I let it take control. Opens the blinds in my mind to let the light in. And standing tall, I hate the call. I just smile and I give the gift I am. Mm -hmm. My heart, my soul. From a higher sight, yeah, I give the gift I am. You do too, the gift I am. The gift I am. The gift I am. Thank you. Well, I'm so excited for our special music today. This is the premiere, at least right here, of, you know, Sophie Zane, because she's filled in for Drew on bass guitar, as she is today. Um, so grateful for that. So Sophie Zane has a, a great little bluegrass group 
Um, it's called Real Folk, and R-E-E-L, Folk. And it is amazing. I'm so excited for you to hear them. I'll let her introduce the members of the band. But let's give a big round of applause for Real Folk, Sophie Zane. Hey, thank you so much for having us. I'm gonna talk while these guys tune because you know how stringed instruments go, right? <laughs> Sitting there doing nothing and they're all out of whack, I'm sure. <laughs> so we play traditional Irish and Celtic tunes. Yeah, it is nice. It's high energy music. Well, we're gonna play a slow one right now, but later we'll play you some high energy music. <laughs> We're going to play you a song by the Wailing Jennies. Um, and this song is um, about how the power we feel from being connected to the world around us. It's called Bird Song. here, aren't we? Yes. Ah, 
I know that maybe was more about spring, but happy fall equinox that's coming tonight. It, it made me grateful for what's coming our way, even though there might be some cold days ahead. Um, I'm looking forward to uh, exploring and seeing the colors of the, of the leaves changing on our trees and, and enjoying what's coming for us too as well. So this month, the power of I am and my talk title, The Miracle of Self-Knowing. I want to start with a quote from our book of the month from Paul Selig. It's called, I am the word, a guide to consciousness of man's self in a transitioning time. Seems like it was written just for this time, right? It was written years ago, but it's, it's uh, so appropriate. Here's what I'm gonna start with. I am now choosing to think only those thoughts which bring me peace and will align me to a higher consciousness. I am doing this easily and through my own intention to know myself as word. Word I am, word through this intention, word I am word. So the title of this talk, there's some pretty big words in there, right? And I wanted to kind of break it down for you. And I wanted to start with miracle. Miracle is a highly improbable or extraordinary event, development, or accomplishment that brings very welcome consequences. Can we agree on that? And the world I'd like to live in is that miracles occur every single day. They happen all the time. They happen in our lives all the time. The next word well, before I go there, what I want to say is of knowing ourselves, this thing about knowing ourselves, self-awareness, by really knowing yourself, that's where you're going to find those miracles. That's where you're going to see those miracles. So the next word that I wanted to go through was radical. Radical, especially of change or action, relates to or affects the fundamental nature of something, far-reaching or thorough. We talk about radical forgiveness. I'm talking about radical self-knowing here. So the power of knowing the I am that I am is both a miracle and radical. So let's dig into the self-knowing part of it, or self-awareness. Because you hear those terms kind of interchangeably all the time. First of all, how many of us heard that, have heard that term, ignorance is bliss? Yeah? <laughs> how many of us have been there? Ooh, yeah, <laughs> right? So it might seem like, well, you know, I'd rather be in that blissful state. But what I'm telling you guys is once you have a moment of self-awareness, of self-knowing, you cannot go back. Sorry. Once you know yourself, once you know what you know, you can't go back. You can try. You can try to dole out things with substances or, or shopping or, or whatever it is that keeps you away from feeling your feelings but you're always open because something within you opened to know who you are and the truth of who you are. Now, I would say that ignorance is bliss could be a way that we're creating our lives. And you know what? It is. The difference is, if we're creating from a place of ignorance or not wanting to see the truth, what we're doing is we're creating from our subconscious. That programming that happens to us in our life. Not just from zero to seven years old, but beyond then. Through society, through listening to the news, through, you know, being in an environment. Like, I had a work environment where, you know, what happened every day was a, 
uh, uh, okay, I'm going to say it, a bitch fest about what was going on in the world. Yes, I said it, Shane. And I had to teach myself to tune that out because I found myself buying into what they were talking about. I didn't want to create my life from that place. We are always creators of our life. Whether we're conscious or we're building it from the subconscious. I choose to build it from a conscious place. I choose to, to build it from a place of life that I really want rather than life that I just kind of get because it's the way it is. So when I talk about awareness, it's about understanding, knowing, and sitting with what you think, what you feel, what you do, what you see, and taking responsibility to sit with all of those things. Well, ignorance is bliss is certainly a lot easier. It just is. But those of us in this room and that are watching on, online, we don't want to live from that perspective. And that's why we're here, with a community of like-minded people where we have to dig in sometimes and really tell ourselves those eternal, internal truths about what we're thinking. And what we're thinking turns into what we're doing. And what we're doing turns into what we're seeing. So even that slightest opening of ourselves, of being aware, means that we can't put it back in the box. So here we are. I decided that living a self-aware life is both a superpower and a super pain. <laughs> it just is. I'm being authentic. I'm going through a pain right now. I am. I'm not going to you know, sugarcoat it. Things are up in my life. And I can either blame others or look within. I can either blame others or expand and grow. I choose growth. I choose expansion, which means I get to sit with it. Whether I like it or not. So it's a lifestyle that I choose to be curious, to be interested in my emotions and feelings so that I have a clear perception of myself. Even within a clear perception of myself, there's still little blind spots that pop up. Because that's just the way it's going to be until we're ready to move on to the, to the next realm. This kind of lifestyle is something where, well, I've gone from here to here, and guess what? I made it. <laughs> it's not like that. I wish it was. <laughs> we're, we're, we're work in progress. I've always said I'm a work in progress. We're always doing the best that we can. So the other spectrum of self-awareness, or let's say the, the other side of the spectrum of it is something called self-consciousness. Has anyone in this room ever felt self-conscious about something going on? Yes? Yeah? So self-consciousness leads us to self-judgment. It leads us to discomfort. And these are the moments where it feels like we question our humanity. But I know better. Because I know within our humanity is divinity. I've been talking about that. Within our humanity is our divinity. And when I get triggered or activated, 
If I'm not grounded in my divinity, ooh, my, mon- my mind can really run the racket. You know, I can buy into what others say. I can buy into what I hear in the news. I can buy into, you know, not living our best life because X, Y, and Z is happening. But no, that's not what I'm here for. I don't think that's what we are here for. That self-consciousness can be a wonderful thing because we're conscious of ourselves, but it also can go too far. And that's what I'm talking about. I want us to say self-aware and self-knowing without getting self-conscious because that self-consciousness just leads to a lot of judgment of other people and ourselves. So Paul Selig says, when you are in judgment of another for any reason, you distort your perceptions of that person and you step out of the Christ consciousness or divine consciousness. And you move out of love. When you can understand truthfully that frequency of love implies love without any sense of judgment at all then you begin to move through this in an active way that is experiential to you. A challenge? I know it can be a challenge for me. I know it can be a challenge for all of us. But we talk about love being who we are, not something outside of us, not something that we're seeking. We are love in form. We are love in body. And if we're not loving someone else because we're judging them, then we're not loving ourselves either. So this is a very important point. So self-awareness is typically in the present moment. Self-consciousness is typically about the past and the judgments of what we did or didn't do, what we said or didn't say. So the question is, how do we get better at being self-aware? How do we get better and go deeper with our self-knowing? The first thing we have to do is engage in reflective practices. Now these, I, I have a few for you, but you might have your own. Some people might just have to go be with the trees or swim laps in the pool, or whatever you do that helps you be self-reflective. The first one I'm gonna talk about is one that's just been um, one of those bugaboos for me in my spiritual life, and that's journaling. Sometimes I can get into it, and sometimes it's the last thing I wanna do. But journaling, my friend, it takes all that stuff in our mind, in our head, and it puts it on paper so we can see it. Because what happens when it's just rolling around our brain and rolling around our brain, it feels like it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Sometimes I feel like I deal with something and I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, it's there again. How did that happen? We need to do these practices so that we can move forward and not stay stuck in our heads. The next one is, oh, and by the way, when I say journaling, something that I learned years ago that really serves me is stream of consciousness. I don't worry about if I could read it later. I just write away. And I don't worry if there's commas, sorry, Linda. I just, or if it's spelt right, it's just a stream of consciousness. That's the journaling that I'm talking about. (laughs) The next one is, What do we do here every Sunday at 9.30 in the morning? We meditate. Yes, Rick. And I keep inviting all of you, and a handful of you show up, and that's okay, but it's so important. If you're not doing it here with us, do it on your own, but I invite you to do it here with us because it's that much more powerful. See, meditation is a great place to learn who you are. Because the essence of meditation is awareness. 
the essence of meditation is awareness. So whether you do it for five minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 50 minutes, it is really a practice that will let you know who you are. Try it. I know some people go in and out of practicing it. It's so important. The next way is to pay attention to our feelings. I have decided that my feelings are really a guidepost for me. If I'm not feeling energetic, if I'm feeling sad, if I'm feeling frustrated, it's not about trying to fix on the outside those things that are frustrating me. It's about sitting with those feelings here, right here, and honoring them and loving myself even if I'm feeling angry, even if I'm feeling sad. Because the more we push them away, the more it builds up. That's just the law of attraction, folks. I didn't make that up. The more you, you put energy on something, the more it grows. You put energy on, on not having enough, you're going to have more not enoughness. You put energy on, on, on gratitude for what you have and you're going to have more gratitude for what you have and it's just going to grow. This is the basics. And I don't think that this is just an airy-fairy teaching. It's called science of mind for a reason. It's tried and true and it works. But we have to work it. We don't go get to go into his doctor's office and say, fix me. I mean, you could, but you have to do your own work. We have to do our own work. I have to do my own work. So notice your activations and triggers. These days, it's more uh, um, in vogue to call it activated rather than triggered, but everyone gets what I'm saying either way. I kind of default back to triggers because I can just imagine that, that there's a little button in me. Someone just pushed it. Ooh, am I triggered, right? So when, we, when that happens, what I want you to remember and what I want me to remember is a trigger is truly a gift because it shows you where you need to heal. It shows you where you need to grow. So some of the most challenging mm, characters in my life have grown me the most. Some of the most challenging times I've had in my life have made me who I am today. It's tricky to know that right in the midst of it, right? <laughs> it's tricky. But that's why I hang out with people that know the truth. I hang out with people that know that when I'm in a certain way, the truth of who I am is brilliant and bright. That I'm just in the midst of the goo growing. And it happens for, for all of us. It happens for communities. It, it's happening right now for the United States. It's happening for the world. So we have to embrace those, embrace those triggers. So, <clears throat> triggers also act as a mirror. I've said this to a few people in my life. There's nobody out there. <laughs> There's nobody out there. You're upset? So-and-so said this or did that? There's nobody out there. I'm saying this for myself, too. There's nobody out there. The only one that I need to, to deal with is myself and how I feel and what I know and the truths that I know and stand firm with that. Stand more firm with that spiritual principle that I know works over and over and over. It helps when I ask myself, what's going on? 
I try to stay from why questions because I feel like those just take me in this loop that never ends. But if I say, what's going on? What's really going on? How do you feel? Where can you give yourself more love? Where can you give yourself more understanding? Where can you grow in knowing yourself more, the truth of who you are? So, like I said earlier, it can be painful to live a self-aware, self-knowing life. But every day, that's what I choose. Can I choose the other? I can. And it, like I said, you can't put it back in a box. It just doesn't work that way. It takes a lot of effort to hide it, to not know what you already know. And I would say this, as we, I'm not going to say age, mature, <laughs> we sometimes form habits. And these habits can either grow us or, or keep us where we're at. So if you find yourself habitually kind of trying to put yourself back in the box, stop it. Just stop it. Stop saying, I can't or I won't or I don't have what I need or I'm not wealthy enough, I'm not healthy enough, I'm, I'm whatever it is. Stop saying that to yourself and know who you really are, who we really are, the I am that I am. We've said it over and over from here. I am whole. I am healthy. I am wealthy. Whatever we put after I am is our affirmation. It's very rare that I say, I am tired. I learned a new way around that. I said, I am feeling tired. There's a difference, though. I don't want to affirm that which I don't want. And sometimes I need to listen to my body and stop. Sometimes I just don't stop long enough to honor those feelings. And that's what I'm challenging myself to do. Stop, sit with it, love it, love me for where I am, love my journey, love my path, and then move forward. Let's go into some prayer time. So as we dive into prayer, let's just take a nice deep breath together. Just breathe in through your heart, Pretend like your heart breathes. Breathe in through your heart. Maybe put your hand on your heart. And then exhale through your heart. And let's do that again. Breathe in through the heart. And exhale through the heart. Mm, And that feels so good. It feels so good to breathe from the heart of love. How grateful I am for this technology of prayer. How grateful I am for this philosophy, for this, this way of living. How grateful I am for this community and everyone that shows up exactly the way they show up. How grateful I am for this this beautiful day, bright blue sky, sun, moderate temperature. It's just gorgeous out there. I am grateful for this. I'm most grateful to know that there is, there's only one. It doesn't matter what we call it, whether we call it God, the way, the force, spirit, oneness, love, energy, light, the divine matrix, Hashem, Adonai. So many names, and yet only one. And this oneness is everywhere. This power presence is everywhere. It's in each leaf that is changing colors and then eventually falling off the tree. It's in the white 
puffy clouds in the sky. It's in the, in the roots of the tree. It's, it's in the seat that we sit upon. It's simply everywhere, every moment of every day, omnipotent, omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient, omni-consciousness. So knowing that is the truth, I know my own oneness. I know that I am the I am. I know that my body stores the cells and atoms of the divine. And every thought, every situation, every challenge, every joy is filled and overflowing with this oneness. And I know the same truth for everybody within earshot of this prayer, whether it's now or listening to this service later, even if they can't hear the prayer. The energy, the, the vortex of prayer that we are creating here can't help but affect the planet and our lives. Because it's all energy. The energy of love, the energy of truth, the energy of oneness. So within this energy, I claim and know for each of us in the room that if we're going through physical, emotional challenges that we're not alone. I also include Jerry and Linda in this prayer as we've heard that Jerry fell last night and broke his hip. We know that they are held in the, in the oneness of God. They are not alone. This community loves them so. We send them, we send them these vibrations of love so they can feel it come and feel it hold them so they know they don't have to go through this alone. And for anyone that's going through any physical challenge, any emotional challenge, any challenge at all, the same is true. If you have someone that you want to pray for right now, go ahead and say your name either out loud or to yourself and the people that you want prayers for. Go ahead and say that now. This whole community is being held because your prayer is my prayer too. Your prayer is our prayer too. The power and the presence of this, this prayer, we are not begging, we are knowing, we are affirming that the universe wants nothing but grand things for our lives and for this community. The universe wants to supply us with the riches that are our birthright. Wholeness, health, vibrant relationships, love, abundance. A body temple that serves us and allows us to do what we're here to do, what we're here to be. So I know it's happening now. And for this, I must say how thankful I am for answered prayer. How thankful I am for the prayer requests that are, that are still flowing in off the tip of your tongues. So since we started praying, it actually had begun before we even began, just by walking in this room and having this intention of being with hmm, intentional community members that love each other. even when we love each other, always now. So I release this into those spiritual laws that only work 100% of the time, 24-7, 365. We let it go. We let our, our, ourselves take our hands off that wheel and let God do what God does, provides abundantly always unlimited possibilities at our fingertips. That's what I know is happening here. And we release it and we let it go. And with our voice together, we say, and so it is. Amen. Ashe. I am so blessed. 
so some of you might wonder, you know, what is Reverend Cindy going through? I want you to know what I'm going through. And you'll see what we're going through if you look out in the hallway at the numbers. There's numbers out there. And those numbers, what they're saying is that we keep using our savings account, which I am so grateful for. Oh my gosh. I am so grateful for that. And we can't sustain ourselves doing that. So this is what I'm going to do. Go ahead, ushers, come on forward. I'm challenging myself. And my donation is going up $25 a week. Now, I know some of you can't do that, but do what you can do. So my donation here, what I'm going to do is put $25 in an envelope and donate that every week. Extra, beyond what I already donate. If you can do 25, and if 40 of us can do 25, we've got this challenge taken care of. If you can't do 25, I understand. Everybody's at a different place in their life with their abundance. But if you can do five more a week, if you can do 10 more a week, if you could do 15 more a week, it makes a profound difference. So here comes Sue with the basket so I can add my $25 in here. All right, so let's bless this giving by outstretching our heart through our hands and repeat after me. I am so blessed. I am so blessed. We are so blessed. We, are so blessed. we, give, we give from the overflow, from the overflow. Knowing, it us, knowing it sustains us and grows us. And grows us. We, are so we are so blessed. And so it is. Let's have Sophie and the real folk come and share some music. I went from bass to bass. Bass jumping. They, <laughs> yeah. they call that bass jumping, right? Bass jumping. I, I, I failed to introduce so my band. Yeah, it doesn't seem very dangerous to me. I failed to introduce my bandmates before. I'm going to have them introduce themselves, actually, and tell you about their very strange instruments. Yeah. So this is a banjo. <laughs> um, okay. So my name is Sam, and this is indeed a banjo. This is a tenor banjo, uh, and this is the type of banjo that's commonly used in Irish folk music. And it's actually tuned very similar to a violin, which is something that I grew up playing, so there's some familiarity there that I don't really have on a normal five-string banjo. But, yeah. uh, hi, my name is Chris, and this is the Irish bazooki. Uh, I don't, the bazooki, I, it was, the Greeks had it, and then I, I guess at some point an Irishman said, we want that. <laughs> yeah, and they, uh, the Irish haven't conquered a lot 
in history, but they have definitely conquered music. Um, and they, they, they brought the bazooki over and they changed the tuning a little bit and adapted it for Irish traditional music. And I love playing it. It's a delightful instrument. And I'm Sophie, I play bass. This is the same uh, tuning as the electric bass that I play. It's just more aesthetic for Irish music. That's the only difference. We're gonna play you a real set, believe it or not, R-E-E-L, this is an Irish dance. We're not gonna dance, but if you feel it, get up and move and dance and clap and, clap and whoop.
yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that was awesome. Thanks so much, Sophie. We've got to have you back. Chris, Sam, what picking, man? That was awesome. Just yeah. awesome. And thank you. Thank you, Reverend Cindy. Thank you for that message. I still, I, I still like my box. I, yeah, I have a couch in there and some ice cream. And, and yeah. I know it's not good for me, but I get out once in a while. I like, I like coming here. Um, let me say just a little bit about that. When I'm in my stuff, I know I can retreat. And that's my typical, well, it used to be my typical MO. Um, and I'm tempted to go into that box with the couch and the, and the ice cream and, and just kind of live there for a little bit, and uh, thinking that I might feel better. And some, sometimes I do, but it's short-lived. When I come here with my stuff, what I love about this spiritual community is that I'm accepted no matter where I am, what I'm being like, my behavior, <laughs> as long as I'm not offensive. I know I'm loved. I'm seen for my potential. I am reminded of things that I should know about myself. Um, and I could be self-conscious about that, but I'm always in good company and supportive company. And I think that's one of the values of being in spiritual community. No matter where I'm at, yes, I'm on this journey and if there's a bump, I'm so glad that I can come here every week and be reminded of who I am. And when I'm at the top of my game, I can remind you who you are. And I just, I just love that. I, that's the value I see in being here. That's why I give. Yeah, that's why I, I'm, I won't say the word tithing, but I just did. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> that's why I support financially my spiritual community. I'm, I want this to be here for the times I feel great and for the times I feel not so great. And to see my good friends and be loved and get a hug, I mean, that's, that's just, it's probably worth more than I'm paying, so I probably should look at that again. <laughs> but <laughs> no matter where you're at, um, today if you'd like to have a treatment, a quick little prayer with a practitioner, make yourselves available for that right across the hall. It doesn't cost any money, just a brief little prayer. Um, gives you a, a boost, face the week ahead. And come on back. Let's stand, everybody. Let's sing our closing song. Who are you? Who are you? You are as God created you. You are light, love, joy. Yeah. Let's sing it. <laughs>